you have a 27 year old woman with history of migraines and depression presents with severe headache that started a few hours ago patient states that while having breakfast she experienced a sudden onset 10 by 10 headache that felt different from her regular migraines she felt nauseated but did not vomit her home medications include escitalopram for depression and ct of her head showed a small convexity subarachnoid hemorrhage involving the post central sulcus on the right perfusion made mri is significant for hypoperfusion in the watershed regions the patient's neurological examination is unremarkable but she does not tolerate a bedside fundoscopic examination because of photophobia what is the most likely diagnosis i think this is something that we have discussed already and uh, the history and clinical presentation is so diagnostic of rcvs and what are the important features of rcvs first of all it's going to happen predominantly in females especially those in the age group of 20 to 50 years our patient in question is also female and in the same age group that is 20 to 50 years and many patients will have history of some vascular condition especially migraine and it can happen in the postpartum period and that's why rcvs happening in the postpartum period is also called as postpartum angiopathy and there could be history of use of some vasoactive medications most importantly vasoconstrictors like triptans or ssris or probably other vasoconstricting agents like cocaine amphetamine can be there in your questions and our patient in question has history of migraine and history of use of escitalopram which is a ssr probably uh, these things are predisposed to the risk of development of rcvs in our patient and there could be other risk factors as well apart from what i mentioned like recent neurosurgery or it can happen after certain procedures like carotid endarterectomy and after use of ivig you can develop uh, rcvs as well and hypercalcemia also is associated with the development of rcvs and trauma to the brain head injuries can have associated rcvs so clinically patients will be presenting very acutely with thunderclap headaches that's very classic and we know what is thunderclap headache and there are multiple differential diagnoses for thunderclap headache not just aneurysm and subarachnoid hemorrhage and if you do CSF analysis, it's going to be fairly normal because even meningitis and meningitis capillaries, ICH and all also can produce thunderclap headache. That's why sometimes you need to go for CSF to rule out meningitis and meningitis capillaries and before that you need to do imaging also to rule out some uh, mass lesion or ICH or probably other conditions. So if you do CT, it doesn't only rule out ICH but in patients with RCVS, you might see something called as convexity subarachnoid hemorrhage which can be seen plenty of other conditions including press and if you do MRA it can be fairly normal also but sometimes you can see hypoperfusion or a frank infarct in watershed zones this finding is fairly specific for diagnosis of RCVS, especially in exams so CT and MRI can be completely normal or they can show convexity subarachnoid hemorrhage plus someone has hyperperfusion and infarcts in the watershed regions and how big the infarcts in the watershed regions is going to tell you the prognosis as well. And the angiogram in the form of CT angio or MR angio or uh, the conventional DSA which is the gold standard can demonstrate beating of the cerebral vasculature. And typically this takes around one week to develop because as I told you initially you are going to have more distal involvement later on only you have proximal involvement once the medium and large vessels are involved that is the time where angiography will start showing findings if the involvement is limited to the distal regions especially in the uh, first one week the angiogram cannot pick up those changes because small vessels cannot be seen in the angiogram and you need to prove that the finding is reversible so after two or three months you need to do a follow-up angiogram and prove that the beating is completely reversed and the vascular chains are completely reversed. That's why it's called as reversible cerebral vasoconstriction syndrome. And beating of the cerebral vascular chain is not specific for uh, diagnosis of RCVs. It can happen in other conditions also. And a very important DD for RCVs is going to be primary angiitis of the central nervous system. In this condition, you can see beating like what you see in uh, RCVs. But apart from that, what are the differential features? The headache will be more subacute in nature. 
they don't generally present with acute thunderclap headaches. Headache will be more subacute. And CSF will definitely show abnormality in the form of lymphocytic pleocytosis, where CSF will be completely normal in patients with RCVS. And what will be the treatment of RCVS? Treatment will be uh, supportive. Some guidelines say the use of calcium channel blockers. But again, the utility of calcium channel blockers and its effectiveness is uncertain in clinical practice. But we still use. Like for example, you can go for verapamil or you can go for nimodipin also to reduce the vasospasm. RCVS is something that's going to have a kind of a benign prognosis only. But if you have a big infarct, then the prognosis may not be benign. But overall, the prognosis is okay. It's not going to be that bad. This patient is not having aneurysmal subarachnoid hemorrhage because there is no finding that suggests of aneurysmal subarachnoid hemorrhage apart from the thunderclap ending. Patient is not having neck rigidity and patient is uh, not having CT picture or MRI picture that is consistent with the diagnosis of aneurysmal subarachnoid hemorrhage. And dural AF fistula is going to have a completely different clinical picture. So uh, that's not the diagnosis here. And superior sagittal sinus thrombus is going to have a picture uh, that's going to be compatible with CVT diagnosis. So here you don't have any MRI picture that is compatible with CVT diagnosis. So it's unlikely to be superior sagittal sinus thrombosis. The right answer for this question is going to be option C, that is reversible cerebral vasoconstriction syndrome.